you have two because they're not so funny to you. They are two. funny. They're both very funny. I want to show them both. Good afternoon. It's Robert and Julia Miller with Rethink Real Estate with another exciting real estate update. Exciting right. and thrilling. That's right. And I have a new introduction. I do not have it memorized yet, so bear with me while I kind of read it off the paper a few times until I have it down to a science. So <laughs> I do apologize. Who we are. We are Robert and Julia with Rethink Real Estate. We make videos to help you stay informed about real estate news, economic change that are impacting real estate. We also make videos of communities in the Northwest Valley of Phoenix with a focus on active adult neighborhoods. Uh, we also do uh, videos about our personal activities, such as the cruise we wish we were on right now. <laughs> Um, Man, do I wish I was on the cruise right now. Our garden. Um, garden? Keeping, we have a very extensive garden. We've joined the uh, Sun City West Agriculture Club, mm -hmm. so that keeps us very busy early in the morning. We, we still work, so, but we get up bright and early. Uh, sun's coming up and make our way out to the garden to kind of get the day started that way. Or we go out in the evening time too. We're, if you're mm -hmm. following us on those garden videos, you know that we're fighting aphids at our garden. So we're right. there in the evening to spray off the plants. So go take a look at those. Yeah. Those are fun too. There's other activities that we're getting involved in slowly but surely. We're joining more clubs and volunteering. We're finding a lot of volunteer uh, opportunities. So we're getting involved in that as well. Okay, we hope that you find the information we share to be valuable and that you consider giving us a call to guide you through your next sale or purchase. All right. So Let's that's get our new started. introduction, right? All right, so the program format uh, is pretty standard. We do a quick joke of the day, we like humor. Um, any of this that you're not interested in, Julia puts points where you can jump ahead and mm -hmm. They're see called chapters. Chapters, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do a little bit of history. Julie and I are both history majors, so we like to keep track of what's happened in, in uh, years gone past this week. Um, comments from viewers, and it looks like we do have a comment from a viewer this week. Um, then we'll jump into news. Now this week we're going to cover the stat report. Mm -hmm. um, we'll wrap it up with mortgage rates and valley inventory. There we go. All right. All right. So you what this joke? episode oh. will be about will be about will will look at the question: What created the housing shortage? We have an opinion by an expert. Yeah, and that's part of the we'll stat share report. That with so you. It's ties part of the right stat in. Report. Yep. All right. So our comment from our viewer, or I'm sorry, we want to do joke of the day, didn't we? That's right. It, that's it's your part format, of the format, so you need to follow up. <laughs> wow. I it was our format. Okay. Oh, tough crowd. What did the tomato say to the other vegetables? What did the tomato say to the other vegetables? Go ahead, I'll catch up. <laughs> hey, you I got into my dad in. joke book again, didn't you? I thought it tied into the garden thing. Uh, you're right, I was it did. Mention the garden. Very clever. Very clever. It. My other joke, because I have another one. Did you hear about the skeleton who didn't dare co cross the road? No. He didn't have the guts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a good Those dad are joke. Good. <laughs> okay. All right. Why did the vampire read the newspaper? Why? He heard it had great circulation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we were both kind of on the Halloween. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, happy Halloween. Today is the 31st. Right. And happy birthday to our oldest granddaughter, Taylor. 18 years old. We have a granddaughter 18 years old. That's just not, it, it can't be. It's we not were very possible. young when she was born. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm uh, not quite that young. Ugh. And happy birth birthday to my best friend. Heidi. That's right. Happy birthday, Heidi. Yep. Yes. Happy birthday. Yeah, we got to so. uh, make a zoo trip mm -hmm. for our combined yeah. birthdays, which was awesome. That so. was fun. All right. Turn All right, on. moving on. A little bit of history this week. 2014 in New York City, One World Trade Center opens for business oh. on November 3rd. What, 19... is, what is One World Trade Center? Oh, sorry. 9-11. 
Oh, the site of 9-11. Okay. Okay, 1998, Senator John Glenn, 77, launches into space October 29th aboard mm -hmm. Space Shuttle Discovery. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it got kind of portrayed a little bit as a uh, publicity stunt. They mm -hmm. actually did studies on space and aging people. Mm -hmm. So they got a lot of good information. Yeah. Uh, from the tests and the experiments and stuff they did with him going up at the age of 77. Nice. So. Yeah, that's all good, good information, good things to have. Yep. 1941, after 14 years' work, South Dakota's Mount Rushmore Monument is completed October 31st. Oh, interesting. I would love to see that. Yes, on the bucket list. Yeah. 1929, the stock market crashes October 29th, marking the beginning of the Great Depression. Great Depression. <laughs> wow. Finally, in 1864, Nevada becomes the 36th state on October 31st as well. Yeah. That's today. So happy birthday, Nevada. All right, moving on. A little bit of news. We're Am do, I doing uh, this right? The comments from oh, the viewers, comment real from quick. The viewer. Okay. So we had a comment from our last. Um, news blog and uh, it is from Addis-1G2IN is the user name. Um, I'm going to paraphrase because it was a little bit long <clears throat> and it kind of ties in with what we're talking about today anyway so that's convenient. Prices are dropping everywhere due to interest rates. Were the shortages, housing shortages, created by greedy investors, builder and realtors, taking advantage of the 2.5% interest rates benefits to flippers, where they swallowed up in, by working families. So we're gonna kind of look at those questions and tie it into what did create this housing shortage? Mm -hmm. There we go. So we'll cover that in the stat report. Episode 128, in case you're counting. Wow, 128, 128. Yeah. nice, very nice. <laughs> Okay, very quickly, then we'll get right into the stat report. Uh, regulatory news, the Fed is expected to maintain rates, uh, mm -hmm. not looking at uh, increasing it for the okay. next meeting at least. They always um, yeah. leave themselves an out in case they yeah. decide at the last minute, but as of right now, no rate increase. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a big week ahead that will affect stock market. October jobs report is also due before mm -hmm. market open on Friday. Okay, this Friday. Um, yeah, or they'll do it early Friday morning, I guess, November 2nd, before the market's open. So, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, in addition, there will be reports on monthly manufacturing activity and factory orders. Mm. So, a couple yeah. of big pieces of information coming. That yeah, big, thing come, big things coming this week. Uh, economic mm -hmm. news. Uh, September personal spending rose 0.7%, but personal income only rose 0 03 yeah. So, based on that trend, uh, analysts predict spending will uh, moderate after several months of consumer spending more than they earn. Oh dear. Let's hope so. Let's we hope don't want sooner than later. Yeah. Racking up a bunch of credit card debt. Especially with the holidays coming. I mean. Oh no, yeah, that's right. You got uh, holidays coming, so yeah. we'll see. Okay. All right. Finally, housing news. Uh, new home sales surge. I don't agree with what they say here. <laughs> I was about to say, hmm. That happens. I didn't read over long. the news beforehand, so this September's is... new home sales surged to a 19-month high, mostly driven by builders offering price discounts. Mm. I don't yeah. think that's the case. I think what's driving it is that they are offering rate buy downs. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing 4.99, 3.99. Um, I haven't seen 3.99 in a while, but there definitely are some, some really good interest yeah, rates that they're offering yeah. if you use their lender. And yeah, I would say that definitely helped their numbers in September. Considering rates are bumping up against 8%, you know, if you can get 4.99. Oh my gosh, yeah. That, Do it. <laughs> that now is a smoking deal. Do it, yeah. You know, so that to me has more to do with the surge in uh, in the success of new construction right yeah. now than anything else. But Especially since, you know, builders' um, overhead is not dropping. So for them to drop prices drastically would 
not it would be counterintuitive for sure because they're they're they still have overhead they have to cover and you know make a profit yep exactly so all right moving on to the stat report the stat report is a monthly report that comes out from the arizona regional multiple listing service um they do an outstanding job tom ruff of the information market puts out a fantastic commentary so we like to we look forward to seeing it every month and we like incorporating it into what we report because it's uh, them along with the Crawford report we feel are the two best sources mm -hmm. of solid, transparent, uh, yep. unopinionated information. It's basically all numbers, all statistics. They're both statisticians and they you know they they give it to you just as it is so and we can definitely send you the full report we usually just go over the commentary because there's a lot of numbers yeah and things it's, like a, that. it's a ton that would put we you to usually, sleep and we'll usually cover those numbers when we cover the Cromford report um, so we just kind of look at Tom Ruff's commentary um, for this segment right Okay, so as our market trudges through rising mortgage rates and scarce housing supply, September as well as third quarter closing numbers report more of the same, dismal transaction <laughs> volume, and we're going to get into that a little bit here. Uh, the balance between supply and demand still favors sellers with the Crawford Report market index currently weighing in at 135, with 100 being perfectly balanced, anything under is a buyer's market, anything over is a seller's market, right. so we're sitting at 135. Now that is down. Yeah, it's it was down. at 50, 154 the month before, so mm -hmm. we are seeing a little bit of a downward trend, but we're still in a seller's market. Yeah, we'll see if fall affects that trend but we really don't anticipate it to because of those interest rates again and the lack of housing supply so um interesting he wanted to take uh, just a moment to kind of review a little history here so it's the road to higher rates how did we get here so in a, a recent okay. ds news article titled how covid 19 reshaped the u.s housing market by mm. dr lisa sturtevant I hope I got that right. Chief Economist at Bright MLS stated the following. The pandemic upended the housing market, opening up new homeownership opportunities for many and prompting others to reevaluate re where they wanted to live because uh -huh. there was a lot of work at home, so that opened up a, a whole opportunity there. Yep. What they wanted in a home, since they were working at home, they you know wanted different layouts yeah. that accommodated that work at home right. situation um also teaching at home homeschooling mm -hmm. ticked up considerably when we went into isolation so yep. all those went into what the uh what buyers were looking for uh, our work research shows the pandemic era federal stimulus payments and monetary mm. policy along with remote work allowed more yep. people to become homeowners, especially individuals and families with traditional lower homeownership rates. So all of a sudden you were able to come mm. up with that down payment due to that stimulus and, uh, and incentives and um, so it worked out that uh, although you were previously not in a position to purchase a home, all of a sudden you were. So that was the two, 2021 mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable banner year in real estate. Right. However, those same policies had a major impact on affordability. Obviously, this is driving prices up. It did drive Supply. Prices up was dwindling down to nothing mm -hmm. uh, 1.3500 3, homes in the entire valley for sale was you know we have over 5 million people here and we had 3500 homes it's just yeah. you can't even get your head around that um, home preference that will shape the housing market for at least the next three to five years so she's predicting we're going to be in this uh, situation uh, for a while Okay, on October 6th, mortgage rates were at 7.81, and I have, when I get to rates, now granted it's from October 18th, but that rate is even higher. Mm. Um, that's the highest rate in 23 years. Yep. One year ago, the 30-year mortgage rate was 7.04, and the rate mm. two years ago at this time, 3.13. Yikes. So, hello stimulus check, hello low rates, low uh, interest rates. 
Right. And yeah, there was enough on the market at that point, people started buying stuff up. So I hope that helps answer um, Addis's question and comment here. Well, part of it, part but, of I, it. but I'm going to touch on more okay, that will more. kind of go over that. Okay. So, according to a recent Fannie Mae survey, as reported by Doug D Duncan, 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 I'm sorry, uh, mm -hmm. Fannie Mae Senior Vice President and Chief Economist, high mortgage rates have surpassed high home prices as the top reason why consumers mm -hmm. think it's a bad time to buy a home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the buyers think it's a bad time to buy a home. Right. Consumers are also not seeing much affordability relief. Again, we talked about, you know, the home prices are still favoring sellers, so mm -hmm. they're still solid. Um, they also indicated that their personal economic situations are showing signs of strain, and I think that would include, yeah. you know, lower year-over-year -year household incomes, and we just talked about spending, um, spending being is higher being higher than, than, than uh, increase. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, lower than household incomes and a reduced sense of job security. We haven't heard that in a oh, while, so okay. that's kind of interesting, okay. job security. In our view, all of this points to home purchase affordability uh, remaining a problem for the foreseeable future, which mm -hmm. we forecast will keep home sales sluggish into next year. On the flip side, respondents also listed unfavorable mortgage rates as the top reason why they believe it's a bad time to sell a home. Mm, right. So you got the buyers saying this is not a good time to buy a home. You got sellers saying this is not a great time to sell a home. And we talked about yeah. the, the golden handcuff with the yeah, interest rate interest that um, is very coveted. You have a two and a half percent rate with it at eight percent now. You are just not do not have a taste unless absolutely necessary for giving up that rate to go buy a new right, home. Right, right. Um, as many homeowners are not willing to give up their locked-in rates or golden handcuff, as as they're calling it, um, sellers are just not listing their homes. Yeah. So I think that kind of answers the question of of why we are where we're at. Is buyers are not willing to buy because of their financial strain and the in the high interest rate and sellers are not willing to list their home and give up the rate that they have so mm -hmm. we're in a stalemate and uh, it just seems to be continuing uh, for the foreseeable future now there are sales going on yes sure. and but, uh, but unfortunately it's com it's very diminished when we view total sales volume through the first three quarters of 2023 the decline in sales activity is readily apparent. Mm, okay. Two years ago, 79,078 sales in the first nine months. Mm, okay. okay, that is a ton of sales. Last year, 67,000, so down substantially. This year, we're only at 56,000, so another mm -hmm. huge drop. Yeah. And uh, pretty okay. substantial from two years ago. Okay. Sales for the first three quarters ranked 19th out of 21 years Armless has been reporting this data. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately not, you know, great news on the stat report, but... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> for those, we're still seeing a lot of gloom and doom. Get ready, we're going to have a massive 25% uh, crash in home values and... Uh, it's just not evident and the things that would have to happen for us to have mm -hmm. a catastrophe like that are just not possible right now with this inventory that we have yeah. uh, and Chief the demand. Chief economists are saying a better comparable um, market to where we're at right now is back in the 1980s or the late 70s, uh, 80s time frame. We had high inflation, we had high mortgage rates, and yeah, mortgage rates were 18% then. So Now here's one very close to home. This is by Sarah po uh, Perkins, a local market expert, um, and she's talking about current foreclosure activity in Maricopa County. Active notices are at a historic low. You can also see what a foreclosure tsunami what? You mean actually. I can't buy a foreclosure. Right now? <laughs> what? 
if you really want to see what a tsunami looks like, you have to go back to 2009 and 2010, oh, yeah. the Great Crash. Oh, yeah. And again, you'll look at the chart and you'll see uh, a huge uh, increase in the availability of homes. 57,000 homes available at the peak. Wow. And then you'll see a huge dip in the demand, mm -hmm. the number of people interested in buying a home, and there's just a great chasm between the two. And that's just not the case right now. No. Um, and again, where this, you can get this, depending on how you use the number, you can create drama. And here's a perfect example. Um, let's see. Uh, in Maricopa County, in September of this year, there were a total of, get this, 30 residential foreclosures. Okay. 30. Okay, in all counties. Again, there's 5.4 million the people counties, in Phoenix. And we're one of the largest counties in the United States. Right. Keep that in mind. Geographically and um, per capita. Right. So we had 30 foreclosures. 31 last month, only 24 in September. Oh, dear. Okay. So there's a seven, okay, hold on six, a I'm so, sorry, there's a, there's a six, there was 31, then 30, and then 24, okay? Oh, okay. So, so there, was a, there were six more foreclosures this September compared to okay. last September. Okay. Six, okay? <laughs> and Tom has a wicked sense of humor, he says, but I have to admit... It's much more dramatic to say residential foreclosures shot up 24% year mm. over year than to say we had six more. Six more. So this is where you get that drama. You know, uh, I can see this headline. Yeah. Foreclosures up year over year 24%. Six. It's six, <laughs> six. homes. It's six <laughs> foreclosures. So be careful what you read. All right, so for October, they're predicting, forecasting uh, in October for both average and median sale prices, a slight increase. Okay. So they're usually pretty much right on the money. They were within $900 this month. Oh, so wow. wow. They, they yeah. really study the numbers hard, and they, they are usually right on the money. Yeah, so yeah. We'll see. Okay. Okay, so I think this just reiterates it. When October's numbers are reported, we expect to see a slight drop in year-over-year -year sales volume right. as well as month-over-month. -month. If our models are correct, year-over-year -year sales volume will be in the 5,100 range. Mm, wow. That is really, That's really low. low. That's really if low. If our yeah. models are correct, October's sales volume will be the lowest in armless reporting history with the exception of 2007 that was the crash mm -hmm. november of yeah. 2007 right when only 34 35 sales were reported yep so okay moving on to rates uh not good news unfortunately uh 30 year has moved from 7.62 to 8. <laughs> Boom. Ooh, yeah 15-year has gone from 7 to 7.29, and the VA is up from 7.12 to 7.42. So, not great news on the not rate great front. News. Uh, Melissa, we need good news. Yeah, I, I wish I had some. <laughs> Okay, seasonally, we are seeing uh, Valley Inventory moving up, especially in the active adult okay. communities. Uh, That's good news. Yeah, Valley um, was at 13,731. We're now at 15,206 active listings. Mm -hmm. A little closer to home, Peoria, 426, now at 475. Okay. And Surprise jumped up from 738 to 844. Ah, wow. Big wow. jump there. <laughs> okay. It's a new community that Yeah, there. it could be a new community. There could be a lot of factors oh, in surprise because there's so surprise. much construction over there. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Yep. All right. Uh, a little closer to home. Trilogy at Vistancia went from 39 to 41. Most affordable is at $469,995. That was a well thought out number. 
Pi <laughs> remains 1,195,000, so that's a cost per square foot of $340. Ooh. Vistancha Village uh, jumped up 29, now at 36, mm. 475,000. Well. Yep, 475,000 continues to be the uh, high, and mm -hmm. 1,195,000 is tops the list. Their cost per square foot comes in at 266 on it's average. Interesting that both of those communities in Vistancia yeah. have 1.195. Yeah, it's just a coincidence. Huh. Um, Blackstone Country Club actually dropped one. They're now at 11. 850,000, the most affordable. 3,200,000 continues to top the list. Mm -hmm. They also top the list at the cost per square foot average of $478. Hang in there, seller. The luxury market picks up in the fall. Yep, that's right. It's coming. That's what the experts tell us. Right. All right. Uh, Cordobella jumped considerably. They were at 16. They're now at 23. 359900 the most affordable, 920000 tops mm -hmm. list. Their cost per square foot comes in at $287. Ah. The Grand <laughs> was at $92. they are now at $103. Whoa, okay. $299,000 uh, for a condo. Yeah, condo. And uh, $1,100,000 tops the list. Their cost per square foot comes in at $264. Westbrook Village, 27, now at 29, 305,000, the most affordable, 689,999, tops the list. And their well cost, thought out. Yeah, their cost <laughs> per square foot is 282. Ah. Uh, Sun City West went from 116 up to 145. Oh, wow. So we uh, here in Sun City West have experienced the most uh, increase in inventory nice. in the last two weeks. Give us a call. Give us a call. That's right. Most affordable, 188,600, 775,000 tops list. That, we actually do have a coming soon listing. That's so, right. Uh, um, we do we'll on the more, golf course. On the golf course. We can so, talk more about that next week or at the end. I'll, I'll let you finish first. Okay. Uh, that comes in at uh, the lowest number of everything we've covered, $236 a square foot on average. Okay, on the golf course, uh, we've went from 14 to 20 options now. Mm, wow. 349700 is the most affordable, 775000 the most expensive, and the cost per square foot for a golf course home in Sun City West is $250 on average. Okay. Sun City West with a pool. We have added three. We're now at 11. Okay. Most affordable, 379000 The most expensive, 665000 So the cost per square foot for a pool, 255 oh, uh, $5 more back. per square foot than it cost you for a golf course loan. Yeah. So okay. it just goes to show that you just, having four community centers all with pools, it just... Uh, there's not a lot of homes available with private pools out here, yeah, we're finding. Yeah. So it's unusual. It, it costs more to maintain. We already pay into the rec center, so why not just use those yeah, pools? Yeah, they keep them immaculate, so. and the center's just pristine, so why yeah. not? Okay, uh, the sold in the last 30 days, 61 units. The average sold price, $389,657. Okay. That comes in at an average cost per square foot of sold at $235. And the percent of list price, in other words, what it listed for and what it actually sold for, 99%. Oof. So we're not nice. seeing any huge 10% off oh, deals. No. It's no. just not happening. You're no. going to pay pretty darn close to what the list price is. Unless the list price is out of whack for some reason, then, you know. And you usually see that adjusted in uh, price reductions prior right. to it finally going under Exactly, under contract. and that's what that means, yeah. So. Okay, finally, Sun City West active average list price currently is $418,845. That comes in at an average cost per square foot of $236. Mm -hmm. All right, that is our report. So our upcoming listing um, is a three-bedroom home on the golf course, two-and-a-half bath. Um, 
extra large garage. It's not, oh, it is three car garage actually, right? Three car garage. Um, I can't confirm that. Two and a half car garage, I believe it is. Two what and it a actually half. Is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is a nice large garage. But anyway, um, on the golf course on the 18th um, green. It's about a seven to five, five to seven iron to the clubhouse. Oh, you yeah. You can see it right across it's, the backyard. Yeah. Uh, Grand View mm -hmm. Golf Course. Grand View Golf Course. Um, fully renovated. Totally, it's completely. Oh, my beautiful. gosh. That home is to top to you. bottom has been uh, yep. completely White remodeled. White kitchen cabinets, shaker cabinets uh, with a tile backsplash. Just beautiful stainless steel uh, appliances and um, very open floor plan a lot of living space it's a large home mm -hmm. for for yeah, sun city west almost 2700 and, square feet 2, yeah 600 and something. it feels every bit of it because it's such an open floor plan now mm -hmm. the way they've That's got it nice. uh, remodeled yeah. so walk-in yeah. shower or you know zero entry shower um, zero step entry, uh, big walk in closet in the master. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, yep. walk in closets here in Sun City West can feel a little smaller if the home hasn't been renovated. This one yep. is big, it's a big closet. It's the way they were building them in 1979. <laughs> so, you know. um, so you could do three bedrooms or den, but that third room does have the double doors, but it has a full closet. So you could definitely use it as yeah, a you need three bedrooms spare for bedroom reason. or guest bedroom or den. Right. Um, what else can we say about it? Oh, they're, they have put on a pergola on the back of That's the right. house uh, with pavers, beautiful paver patio. Uh, so can't wait to show you guys that. 18th green. So you get yeah, to see the green. shots in and you get to see them play in the 18th hole. So that's to me, that's the, the best for golf course to be able to see them, you know, hit a shot into the green uh, and then watching them putt out. Yeah. Watch for our announcement on a open house on that one. Yeah. I'm hoping to do a two-day open house. So right. We'll do something in the evening. Watch some sunsets. Maybe a little yeah. wine and cheese event mm -hmm. for the okay. evening, but then we'll have, be, prior to that, we'll have one. Uh, it's kind of a regular open house. Regular open house during the day. Yeah. So. so. All right. That's our report. All right. Everybody have a blessed rest of the week, and we will talk to you again very soon. Take See care. Soon. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.